we've come to a fun fair on our test track. What are we looking at? We're looking at budget cine cameras. These are great cine cameras that don't cost an arm or leg, but you do need two arms to hold two cine cameras each. So let's have a look at what we've got. Canon. Sony, Sony, Panasonic, Panasonic, and another Sony. These are budget scenic cameras, which you can get anywhere, but we got these from MPB, and this video is sponsored by MPB. It's a big, huge platform for buying used gear. You can buy and sell used gear. Yeah, not just steel camera, scenic cameras as well. Cameras these as well. are all used and still work. Yeah, you can check out all the conditions. They've got a little page saying what conditions, and you can see how many hours these cameras are done, which is what we've done, and we've got them now. So here we are. Let's check these out. It's not easy moving around four cine cameras. Yeah, it's always fun when you're carrying four cine cameras as well as another character to film with, and a pelly case, and a tripod. Well, look at that, that's a, that's a bit rude, isn't it? Look at that master blaster. The first affordable cine camera is a blast from the not so distant past. Some might think that is not enough for them these days, but I think it's an absolute belter of a camera. This is a classic. This is an all time favorite. This is the C70 before the C70. Nice compact size. It feels good, it's not too heavy, and it's got built in ND filters, of course. It kind of cycles through them in a kind of rudimentary way compared to your C70s and C300, but it works. That's fine. I've always thought this could be a great vlog and carry because it is lightweight and it's got a tilty clippy screen as well. It's integrated onto the body, so you don't need to add it on like the C300 Mark II. Quite easily vlog like this. This is my vlogging tripod. Or you could chuck away all the accessories for a minimal setup. You can have it bare bones and just have it without the grip. It looks pretty tiny like that. Of course, if you want to put everything on, you can make it to impress clients and stuff like that. Just don't tell them it doesn't have 4K. Pimp it up, pimp it up, pimp it up. It's just, you know, you can carry that all day. Carry it all day. Urgh. It's got built-in viewfinder as well, which some cine cameras don't have. Of course, you're going to be in the shadows here, but that's all right. We don't need to see the details on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean like that. Don't get offended. Don't be so sensitive, you snowflake. Look by generation. Yeah. There aren't too many cine cameras that you can happily do this with, which is great if you could get over the obvious. But the only thing is, of course now, Canon shoot 8K with the R5. This doesn't even shoot 4K, it shoots 1080 max. But the sensor inside, it's a 4K sensor. It's the same as the C300 and C500. So it's a 4K sensor, it's down sampled. Of course, if you're publishing in 1080, doesn't matter. If you're just starting out with video, put the resolution thing aside for a moment because this is a great starter camera. But one big thing about the C100 Mark II, why didn't I pick C100? C100 Mark II has got dual pixel autofocus, which is one of the big things, one of the big reasons why you want to buy a Canon anyway. That, and you can be Canon fanboy smug about. Canon color science, obviously. It's pretty much been the same throughout eternity. Canon color science has just stayed the same, unlike some other brands. We'll get onto that in a minute. Okay, now I've got to figure out how to change the picture profile. Well, if you're Canon fanboy, you'll probably want to feel right at home with the way it operates. But although having used a C70 and C300 too, the menu system feels a little bit different on the C100 too. Is that much different than the C70 you've got? Mostly it's the same, but I would have thought in the camera icon you can choose the frame rates and things like that. Interestingly, the frame rates are in other functions. It's no big issue, really. As far as cine cameras go, the controls are incredibly easy to comprehend, which makes the step into using cine cameras not daunting at all. You know, you can't be that in terms of price and what you get for it. A nice, compact 1080 file size. And that, that's like saying, OK, you don't really get a very detailed 1080. But it does look, look pretty good compared to some other 1080 cameras, because as I say, oversampled, it's sampled down to 4K. If you're going to upsample it back to 4K, it's not going to look the same as 4K. I guess it depends on what you work for. Like, I, I think it depends yeah. on who you work for. I think a lot of TV 
program, uh, TV show, they still on 1080. If you frame tightly enough, then it's good enough. The thing is, everything comes with 4K these days, even microwaves, or maybe not microwaves. Most of us have it already, so it's the least we expect in our tech. A new iPhone and used C100 II cost about the same price. And the iPhone does look sharper with its 4K footage compared to the C100 II, but the Canon looks better if you know what I mean. Even though the face AF doesn't seem totally locked onto my face, the smoother, more rounded details contribute to more filmic look. And if that is what you're after, the C102 produces some great looking files with that excellent sensor. It's not all about sharpness, but rather what looks right to your eyes. I love it, it's great. I mean, for me, open gate is a lot of times just a safety let. Yeah. And it is for when I, because we shoot for just YouTube, a lot of times just by ourselves. So it's easier to just one camera and then just cop in, open gate. But if you're in the production, you probably have more than one camera anyway. So who needs open gate? We've got closed gate here. Closed gate is fine. And if closed gate is no good for you, then let's open the gates to look at an affordable Sydney camera with 4K. Sony! FS5 Mark II. Yes, indeedy. Oh no, it's on Cape, Cape Verde. I don't want that time zone. No! How do I go back? Menu systems brought to you by Sony. Um, God. You know what? That's fine. We'll go with that. <laughs> We've gone back in time. Oh yes, it's the brand new Sony 15mm f1.4. Oh, that's clever. Okay. It was like 2019 I said it to. It's adjusted to the current day and time. I don't know how it did that. Hey. Oh, auto clock adjust and auto airway adjust. So it adjusts the time. I don't know it do that. That's clever. High tech. We live in a high tech era. And 4K. Let's let's see where Sony have put the, the card format. <laughs> uh, okay. It's not the hardest thing to find in the menu system, really. Although I did still resort to using the smartphone to find the answer. I'm googling how to <laughs> format cards. Compared to the Canon, getting familiar with the FS5, FS5 II can take a bit of time. The buttons are clearly labelled, but there's just a lot of buttons and text splashed all over the side of that body. Just take a look and see 102 again, and then look back at the FS5 II. Then there's the old school menu logic of it's greyed out, you can't use it, and we're not going to tell you why or how to access it. Why can't I access that? That white balance. Well, for S-Log3, you need to go to picture profile, setting, and then color mode. Apart from that, though, it's a great body. There, there we are. Executing. Oh, there's a countdown as well. So we've got the energy filters here. It's clear. And you've got variable as well. So both physical ND and wearable electronic ND. Yeah. Wow. Memory stick. So you've got some memory stick left from your PSP. Yeah, and you stick with it. And if you're really on the run, there's a full auto. So if you're really on the run, you've got full auto as well. If there's something something happen, you haven't set it up. Can you do it while recording? Yeah, you can do it while recording. Full auto means auto exposure, auto white balance, and auto focus. It does make it a lot quicker. Although when it comes to setting up, it's still not that quick. It still does that Sony thing of, uh, your, your memory card is not, is not formatted to Sony, so we're going to make you wait a few seconds. Do you want to build a uh, database or something? But if you're expecting Sony level of auto-focusing, you know, current hybrid level of focusing, then you'll be disappointed. Or does it have face detection? Really? Yeah. Let me try that. No, it detects your face. So I do. <laughs> You're moving too quick. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it does have face detection, but it doesn't always work that well. Let's not forget that it wasn't too long ago that Sony wasn't the continuous autofocus king for video. The focusing system on FS5 II is the same as FS5, face detection, autofocus. Even then, sometimes it'll work totally fine, but there are other times when it will frustrate you. Just because it's face detection, don't expect it to perform like a recent Sony hybrid camera. The main difference with the FS5 II is that it adds uh, raw output, and you can do HD 120p. They improved the color signs with the FS5 II over the FS5 with Venice color signs. But then they say that with every new camera they release these days. I really like this actually, the FS5 II. 
It's just a fairly reliable camera for taking video in a body that is not too obtrusive. A bit like the C102. I think the Sony's a little bit heavier, but the size is kind of similar. They've both got built-in viewfinders. Top handle, of course the screen but here. 4K. The FS5 shoots 4K also and you can save yourself a bit of money if you go for that instead because it's basically the same camera. The main advantage of the FS5 II is the Venice style colours on No Picture Profile and Picture Profile 1 which look great. But if that doesn't tickle your cine camera fancy then you can get yourself a great bargain with the FS5. And it still looks good. And this costs what, about 1200 quid? You can go cheaper and get an FS5 pretty much the same thing, or you could grab one of these, FS7, FS7, look at that beast, kind of similar button layout, yeah, same thing but not bigger, it's got a built-in viewfinder though, oh yeah, I mean, many, many will consider that FS7 is a lot more professional but it's brilliant, it's a great tool, the FS5 II. I mean, for the same price, similar price, that's the FS7. Essentially, the key advantage of going for an FS7 over an FS5 II, apart from the obvious difference in body, would be the 10-bit video versus 8-bit video. It just depends where you want to spend your money, the FS5 II, or do you want to show off? But this has got the improved colour science. Always, they always do. <laughs> yeah. The thing, isn't it? Oh, it's a new camera. Uh, what, what new stuff have we got? Colour science, yes. And Panasonic always have improved AF. <laughs> Talking about Panasonic. And at last. That's, uh, that's the Canon accessory. This is a camera that I reviewed for CVP seemingly not too long ago. Was it when I visited? No. I was thinking it might be, but it's not. It's, not. it's quite compact. Yeah, I think that, that one was bigger. You yeah, know, I think that was a Black Magic Ursa. This is a, oh, right. They all look the same. But this is a Panasonic EVA1. I'm quite amazed because these were, I don't know, a few thousand pounds before. But it's been largely forgotten about, hence why it's super cheap now. But I've forgotten how much of a pain it can be to use. High time pop. zone. We don't need a plus. We are at the centre of time. It's not very sensitive touch screen. You have to actually press into it. It's pressed so hard. I can see how hard you look to really press, press hard. into it. That looks nice. Not looking forward to using the menu system on this. Why should I'm saying Panasonic menu systems are right? It's just a touch screen on this. I'd rather use a, an actual physical button. Okay, vlog. That's good. It's something we're used to. Whereas I'm not used to this rubbish touch screen. <laughs> I thought it was off. <laughs> the screen is it's terrible. Just, it's kind of dark and then it's quite grey. <laughs> I mean, there's no view assist on in a minute, but that's not the issue. The issue is just the screen. I'm looking at myself. I'm just looking at the yeah, reflection I don't of mean, myself. I don't mean the wee log. It's just the screen is just grey. <laughs> like some really old ATM with a uh, reinforced glass or something. You're look, looking through with some layer of plastic. <laughs> You're like using a large form of camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I get my face any closer to it, I'll be licking the screen. I don't, I don't care if it's out of focus or overexposed. We just wouldn't show the IR. Yep, that's right, IR. You can switch the IR filter off. So you can have like infrared style uh, videography. Great for when you're taking photos of trees and stuff like that. I mean, video of trees. I've had enough of using that touchscreen. Let's not even talk about autofocus with this one. This probably got the worst autofocus around these four cameras. Yeah. Well, for a start, it's Panasonic. It's not quick, but it works. Especially it's not native lens. Maybe it's better than the, the first generation of Panasonic S5. Actually, you don't know because, as I said before, Panasonic camera, when you test it, it works. Yeah, exactly. And then when you actually want, want to use it, it's like, why is it not working? Can I imagine I'm still flashing hands on like autofocus after S5 Mark II. Still got a chance to 
know. Joke about it. Yeah. There's no point laughing about AF on old cameras. That's like laughing at your granddad for using a walking stick. One thing worth highlighting, though, is how good the image is. Compared to the other cameras here, personally, I think it produces the best looking image. 5.7K, very simple to get good looking video. Lovely highlight roll offs. Oof. Yeah, that was rubbish. So there we are. Panasonic, don't buy it. It's, it's really <laughs> annoying to use. <laughs> People are only just gonna buy Sony and Canon anyway. So just dumb that aside. Only joking, they're all cracking in their own way. The Panasonic Evo 1 has really gorgeous looking 5.7K 25p or 4K 60p 10-bit files. The Sony is a Sony and the C100 II is just amazingly cheap now. And if you're not bothered by super crisp video, it will treat you with its decent AF and lovely looking files and save you a ton on hard drives. They won't disappoint and they won't break the bank, which is always good. Oh, and one last thing, big shout out to MPB for sponsoring this video and loaning the gear to us. You can get these cameras and much more from MPB. Check them out, the link is down below in the description. There's hijack going on. There's car hijack. <laughs>